Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time we're playing with the Ancient Gear deck yet again. Now, in the previous video that I did with this deck, I made a point about different, like, ratios of starter cards and the deck's ultimate lack of them. Uh, but I actually had not considered a card that was suggested to me in the comments of that video, and that is Foolish Burial Goods. I did not actually consider that as an option, because in my head canon, in my mindset of how Catapult worked, I just didn't actually, like, read the clause on the card. I just assumed that it couldn't be used the same turn that it was sent to Graveyard, like almost every other card that has a Graveyard effect in the current format, in the current game of Yu-Gi-Oh! So I just never really assumed that I could use Foolish Burial Goods to send it to Grave, and then use it to banish and generate a token. Now that is strictly worse than just drawing the Catapult outright, but it does make it act as a starter card. You get a token, which I mean could be fused with, and then you also get to, you know, pop your Gear Town and stuff like that. So it essentially gives you a good, like, balanced combination of six and six starter cards uh, with gear towns. Uh, so that's that's in theory the way that this uh, that this deck should be operating. But still, in the hand that you see, I've just clogged on gear towns. That is definitely still a problem this deck has. I might still try to implement the Zodiac engine into this deck, even with the limitation on Rat, uh, because of the fact that it is still barrage. It can still pop gear town, and your gear town can still get you another level four, which in essence completes the Zodiac Beast combo, because you'd get Wyvern, get a search, and then your barrage would summon Rat, and you'd be able to do like a Fusion Substitute combo, and it would complete your combo because that Wyvern would be another a level 4 for you to use for like your uh, Emerald play and stuff like that, so it would be somewhat viable to do something like that. It would actually just be like the original uh, Fusion Substitute combo um, in almost its complete entirety because you'd be able to d use like double Emerald and stuff, but... Uh, whether or not that's something that I go forward with is definitely something that I have yet to decide. Uh, but as you can see, I'm playing against a Gladiator Beast <laughs> Invoked deck. Uh, this is a very interesting uh, concept that Canadian Courage has come up with. Um, whereas, he tries to use the Invoked Engine as you know, strong normal summons. He gets to use his Gladiator Beasts um, alongside the newest card, uh, Noxious, to, uh, to like just basically just try and gain advantage outside of the Invoked Engine and stuff like that. So it ultimately just works out like, in theory, kind of well. On paper, it looks good, but in practice, I'm not too sure. Uh, but, so, as you can see, I drew a Wyvern, and so I used that to search for Catapult. That way, when the Wyvern inevitably leaves the field, I can then just use Catapult on my Gear Town, and that'll be good. But, so he uses a, he uses the uh, Quaking Mirror Force here, and I've still just got multiple, <laughs> multiple Gear Towns. I've got two Gear Towns. I've got one on board, one in hand, and then I've got one uh, set on my board. So there's, there's not really much I can do here. I was really surprised at the Regeki resolved, by the way. I was expecting that Regeki to be negated so that I could resolve my Wyvern. I was trying to bait the, the Makaba negation, but then it just actually just killed them. So I was like, okay, this works absolutely fine. But so Quaking Mirror Force has my stuff face down, which means I'm super vulnerable to a Gladiator Beast play if he has one to normal summon. Uh, but fortunately, that's just not the case. There's there's nothing going on that, uh, that I have to be worried about. As far as uh, as far as Gladiator Beast stuff now, I believe that Quaking was set turn one when I busted over his Equest, and I'm just curious as to why it didn't get uh, like flipped so that the Equest could tag out. I'm actually just really curious about that. I guess maybe it just he just wanted to keep the Quaking Mirror Force or something a bit more relevant. But I'm playing Ancient Gears, so almost everything that I have says that your opponent can't activate things when you attack. So like, and he's playing around that properly here. He just discards the Alaster. Um, to uh, to make the Makaba 35 when I tried to enter battle phase with my uh, Reactor Dragon, because if I had attacked with the Reactor Dragon, he wouldn't be able to activate a Laster at that point. So it basically keeps me from attacking, but it's still not a very valuable interaction. But I drew into a Dimensional Barrier, which I've set, which is great, because that means that I'm able to potentially just get him, because if he has another copy of a Laster, he can just punch over my Reactor Dragon. But if he gets greedy and he summons the Laster that he adds, then he's going to lose his invocation and lose his Alaster, and he has to have now the third Alaster in his hand, or else he's not going to be able to uh, do anything about it. He's not going to be able to do anything about my Reactor Dragon. Uh, so he ends up getting greedy, and I use the barrier calling Fusion, and so as long as he doesn't have a trap in his hand with Makaba, that Digi Barrier resolves, and it did, and that allows me to just punch over the Makaba now without having to worry about Alaster as, as an option. But so the Reactor Dragon has Piercing. Uh, under it. Um, I threw the Hound Dog out there just to see if he would negate something, um, and he did end up negating, so I mean, I'm completely fine with that. There's there's nothing I'm really too worried about with it as far as how it goes, uh, but it is a mandatory burn effect, and so I could have potentially saved the Hound Dog until uh, main phase two, but it just took a card out of his hand, which ended up just working out better for me anyway, but 
So Reactor Dragon has piercing, so I attack over his Makaba. I use its effect to pop my Gear Town, which is an insane interaction, to summon another Gear uh, Reactor Dragon out of my deck, and then attack with it over the Elaster, popping his uh, Reckless Magic Circle, his uh, Magical Meltdown, and then I've just got two Nines on board, and I've got Catapult plus Gear Town in hand, so I'm perfectly fine with like as far as a follow-up goes, if this uh, if this uh, Flying Fortress Interblot there like gets taken off the board, but I use it to banish the last card out of his hand, which ended up being a Gladiator Beast Noxious, which is the battle one that spe special summons itself when you declare an attack, which is not really the strongest against my deck because, again, I am playing Ancient Gears, so I'm going to be able to just not have that effect go off because I can just attack with only things that I know are going to prevent him from triggering it, but still, the fact that I was able to get it out of his hand just meant that it was just very good for me to be able to attack directly um, and so he just drew a Ghost Ogre, summoned it, and suicided it, and then I just kill him next turn. But it's fine. I had game, like, in multiple different ways. Like, I had the game under wraps anyway. But So, next game, he gets to go first, and he starts with an Elaster, and he fuses with Max C here. Uh, because in his mind, and I asked him this after the game, I was like, why did you fuse with the Max C? I was like, and one, I was, I found it hilarious that he fused with the Max C when I was literally looking at five special summons in my hand. <laughs> um, I was like, wow, uh, that was insane. But so he just puts the big guy on the board, I guess just so that, like, I don't have any like potential plays like with multiple reactor dragons again because it's got a 3300 defense. Like it keeps him from dying and my stuff is naturally very big. So I guess I can understand, but his re his reasoning for fusing with Max C was that I don't expect Ancient Gears to be special summoning a lot. And I mean, I guess that's fair, but all of my plays that involve special summoning once are almost guaranteed to special summon twice. Uh, so Max C is almost always a plus 1 in any interaction uh, with the Ancient Gear deck. So I feel like fusing away with that Maxi was just strictly a mistake, um, and it was something that he definitely is getting punished for here, because I was able to go Fortress plus Catapult, Special My Dudes, Summon Gadget, Special Wyvern out of my hand, I've got the Hound Dog, I searched uh, Ancient Gear Box off Wyvern, which allows me to get the Gadget for an extra card, and so I use the uh, the Hound Dog's effect to, um, to fuse into my uh, Ancient Gear Chaos Giant, which does piercing, it's bigger than his, uh, than his uh, Earth Dude, and then I get to attack over the uh, Elaster, and then I am literally 100 points over game. Like, the hand was literally perfect to just do a quick game shot. And as you can see in the chat, he's saying, wow. And normally, the video would end here. Normally, the video would end here with a 2-0 victory, but because of how short it is, I asked him if he'd like to do a third game uh, so that we could just pump up the video length a bit, get a little bit more information, get a little bit more, you know, just overall just data because this is something I'm very like curious about as far as how this deck functions um, and I'm trying to gather as much data as I can and I'm trying to put out as much data that's what I do for my channel I try to put out data that's not what I'm really like people don't people don't really expect that but I'm literally putting up videos for just evidence as to why things like can and cannot be good and stuff like that but so he goes first and he fuses within a quest with a laster adds the laster back makes a Raijin and I use Twin Twister with my Ancient Gear box just as a free interaction just to get rid of those two back row and it's Lost Wind and a Quaking Mirror Force. So, two very good cards for me to deal with. And so now I've got Foolish Burial Goods, which is, again, what I said, it's a starter card in essence. It's kind of a pseudo starter card uh, because I am able to send Catapult, but it's strictly worse than Catapult because Catapult would be getting a Wyvern by itself and Gear Town is not. So, like, that's the biggest issue that I have overall with it. So you get a token which is neat, I guess, uh, but then you get to trigger your gear town and just summon something. And now, I probably would have summoned Wyvern here. Um, if I had summoned Wyvern, I could have, like, I could have summoned Wyvern, gotten a search, uh, made Ancient Gear Chaos Giant, or just Tribute Summoned for Reactor Dragon to give it, like, piercing. Uh, but I hadn't set my Dimensional Barrier first, and Wyvern prevents you from being able to, uh, to set cards after you activate its effect for the rest of the turn. So I was like, I'm definitely not going to just let this Dimensional Barrier just uh, stay in my hand. And so I decide to just go straight into Reactor Dragon, try to attack the Raijin in the battle phase. In the start step of the battle phase, he uses Raijin to flip it face down, which is correct. And so now I know he has a Laster in hand. Um, he, I know he has a Laster in hand, and he's not wasting it like he did the last game. Because I literally just don't have to attack if he just discards the Laster. Um, whereas if he discards a Laster on his terms, he can attack over my monster and, you know, have a good situation going on as far as uh, he's able to kill my monster on his terms. But so, here we have a repeat performance of the previous game, where he gets greedy and he normal summons a Laster instead of just discarding it to uh, guarantee getting over my Reactor Dragon, and I'm just able to answer with the Dimensional Barrier. So it's just like, it's, it's a repeat performance. Now the only way that my Reactor Dragon is going away is if he has another copy of a Laster in his hand. And there are multiple copies left in his deck at this point. There are still all three Terraformings, all three Magic Meltdowns, 
and two Alasters. Uh, but this card is at three! Um, and so, like, like Alaster, he has, like, seven, eight more copies of it in his deck that he could draw into, but he just doesn't have them, so like, it's, it's fine. Um, it ends up working out fine for me. And what's an interesting interaction is the fact that Ancient Gear Howitzer is unaffected by all card effects, period, is, uh, is that um, with Dimensional Barrier, it doesn't get negated, <laughs> so it's still unaffected by everything. Uh, but so he does end up having a second copy of Alaster. He just kills my Reactor Dragon outright. He can't uh, he can't touch the uh, the uh, Howitzer, and Howitzer is actually just one of these cards that has a magical number against this sort of situation. It's got a magic number in that it's a thousand and Alaster is a thousand. So I'm able to burn him for a thousand in the main phase, and then suicide the Howitzer with his Alaster, and then its effect will trigger Special Summoning Reactor Dragon out of my deck. Um, as, a, like, ignoring its summoning conditions, but that's fine. Reactor Dragon can be summoned by Gear Town and all that other stuff. Anyway. But, what this means is that when the Howitzer resolves and the Reactor Dragon gets summoned, at that point we're in battle phase in, an, in a uh, closed game state. The next action that has to happen is someone being the turn player declaring an action, because the game state becomes closed um, after that uh, chain resolves. And so his Raijin isn't able to flip my Reactor Dragon face down, um, and so I'm able to attack re with the Reactor Dragon, and he's not able to... Uh, He's not able to do anything if he had another Alaster in his hand. Uh, but as you can see, I was winding up for the at three! Why? Because D-Barrier does not say Link on it. So, you know, Konami has no reason to try and touch that card right now. Because if anything, it just pushes further product release once the Link format hits. And once Link monsters come out, Link monsters won't get hit by Dimensional Barrier. So why should we hit it, right? Uh, but so I've just got Reactor Dragon on the board and I basically just completely kept him from doing anything. I popped his, la his uh, Lost Wind with Reactor Dragon attacking, and now I'm just doing the exact same interaction that I did game one, where I summon, Re or I have Reactor Dragon on the board, I drew into a Gear Town, or I drew into a Terraforming more accurately, but it is Gear Town, and then I searched for Gear Town, put Gear Town on the board, attacked, used Reactor Dragon to pop my Gear Town after it did damage, which then allows the Gear Town to special summon the other copy of Reactor Dragon from my graveyard, giving me game on board. And even if it wasn't game on board, I could pop his Magic Meltdown just for the quick swift plus one interaction that just lets me uh, do some really nice stuff because of the fact that Reactor Dragon every time it attacks is a plus one. Tributing this thing over Ancient Gear Gadget is such a strong situation because it gets to attack twice, does piercing, and pops two cards. And if you have your own Gear Town that you're able to pop or your Fortress, like that just gets insane. I absolutely love the interactions Ancient Gear Reactor Dragon has in this deck, but anyway, as always guys, thanks for watching and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. If you have any suggestions for the deck or anything like that, definitely be sure to leave those down below. But be sure to like and subscribe and check out the links in the description to my Facebook and Patreon pages. If you want to help support me directly, then Patreon is the best way to do so. It also gets you access into a monthly raffle giveaway at the end of each month, so definitely check out the details of that over on Patreon. I'm giving away a couple of boxes of Duel Saga, or a couple of like the, the sealed product boxes of Duel Saga this month. But if you're looking to buy or sell cards while also indirectly supporting the channel, then be sure to check out Second Chance Gaming's website, which is also linked in the description. They're a direct sponsor of me and this channel, and I'm a big fan of how they do business with what I've experienced so far, but definitely check out their site and let them know that Phoenix sent you if you want to acquire any cards that were played in these videos. But other than that, that is it for this video. Again, thanks for watching, thanks for your time, and as usual guys, take care. I'll see you in the next video. Let me know what you think.